Well, hello you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's Salisa coming to you from Beautifully Me and You, de Bellamente y tú y yo. And today I thought I'd bring you guys along for a shop vlog, an Etsy shop vlog. I have a lot of work that I need to do, a lot of orders that I need to process. Um, but even more so than just processing orders, there's some work that I need to do to restock the shop and get it ready because as I've been working in nursing, I've just been letting things run out of stock. And so I really need to create some products, list some products, and then also create some new products. With that being said, I need to list those boxes, the savings boxes that I've already created, as well as create the pre-sale listing for the boxes. And I started on it, but I thought I'd bring you guys along for the rest of the journey. So if that sounds like something that interests you, seeing the day in and day out activities of an Etsy shop owner, then let's get right into the video. All right, so to get started, I figured I'd start with the this or that savings challenges. And that's just because um, I was trying to count up how many I actually had left so I can know if I should take them out of stock or not. I do have some orders. Um, I like to put them in order of, wait, those are the binders we're gonna put them in, hold on. Okay, so I have five orders for this or that savings challenges and I don't think I have enough to fulfill all those orders. So I really gotta get on restocking these immediately um, so that I can process those orders. But for right now, what I like to do is sort them in their number, you know, cards. And I have a full three sets right here. So I'm gonna process those and get those out to whoever ordered those. We'll start there. And then if anybody ordered just like a random card and I have it available, I'm gonna go ahead and send those out as well. And then the last two this or that challenges, I'll need to um, restock so that I can get those orders out. Luckily, they're not due till next week, but I'm planning on trying to get everything out before the end of the week, you know, so I got to get on that. All right, so what I'm going to do first is just start stickering everything here. And I'll probably put this in time lapse because you guys don't have to be here necessarily for this, but um, I'll just, you know, bring you along for the ride. Okay, so okay, so I did two of them and I thought I'd slow it down and show you guys in the last one that I'm gonna be able to make today. So I do need to get some more cards made so that I can put the other challenges together. So I usually just put the cover sheet and then I put challenge number one. If you don't know that this or that challenge has six scratch off cards like these with back challenges on the back side as well. So like for instance, this card on the scratch off side will save you $100 plus a bonus scratch. And on this side, it has um, saving 300. So this will be like $400 for this one little envelope. So then I put an empty envelope that you could put your cash in. And then we go into section two, this one saves you 140 and on the back side saves you 250. And then an empty envelope. So basically all scratch offs have under, I think under 200, all the scratch off totals. So they're kind of smaller amounts for scratch offs. And then the challenge ones on the back, they all vary, but they're not too high either. Like on section six, hi Chinchi, hello. Like, I'm, like on section six, there's this one dime at a time and this one equals $480, but it's like small amounts that don't equal over $40, you know? So it's pretty easy to do these challenges. It just will take some time, which is the point, right? If you buy a whole book of savings challenges, don't you want it to take a while? If we're done in like one month, then what was the point? Okay, so, <laughs> so then I just put it back in the bag and um, that is it. So this is three orders that I know I can get out. I think I have five or six, so I gotta get on the other ones, but here's three of them that are already done. So when we actually ship orders, I'll be sending those out. Now I do wanna check and see how many actual orders I have. So hold on, let me just check on that really quick and see if anybody had any random cards as well. And then I'm gonna get onto the orders for the day. One. Okay, I keep all the challenge cards in these little bins. It's my phone case. I keep all the challenge cards in these little bins and I do have one for just section one and section six. So I'm gonna do that one as well, or do those. 
because I think I'm out of section three. I don't know how that happened, but section three is the one that everybody's been ordering and there's no more of those. So, Anywho, I have one order for single cards of section one, section six. So I'm going to go ahead and sticker these and get these ready for orders as well while I'm here since I do have those. And then I'll have two more complete books that I need to put together and I'll get those done by the end of the week. Probably most likely on Friday. I think the orders aren't due until next week sometime. But again, I'm trying to get most things out today. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that done. And then we'll move on to trying to release these boxes. Now, I created the listings and I think they're okay, but I did run into a problem and I'll show you in just a second. Okay, those were quick and those are done. So we'll stick that over there. All right, now let's talk about the boxes. For the boxes, um, I am trying to do a pre-sale as well as sell the seven that I already have. So I made an Etsy listing with the seven and I also said to tie these photographs so when someone selects box number one, it has a picture of what box number one looks like. Let me show you guys the listing. Okay, so these are the two listings right here. This one um, is gonna be for pre-sale and that one I think it's fine. I'm only gonna do 25 of them. They're gonna be $65 each. And I did um, create some examples, but I did also state that, let's see. Um, I said the boxes are all random colors and I'll try to accommodate preferences when I can. List your color preference in the personalization field. So I think that one's okay. So I'm gonna publish this one. Um, and we'll just see how it goes. And then, <laughs> and so that one's published and I'll make a posting about that. And now the other one is the one that I'm having the problems with, which is the one that is the seven boxes that are already complete. What I did do was down here under box one, two, three, four, five, six, I took a picture of each box and made it visible supposedly on the listing. But when I previewed the listing, it just shows like this and it just says box one, box two, you know, and it's not changing the pictures or anything, but I'm going to trust that Etsy's doing their best job and that <laughs> this is going to work the way that I want. I'm going to go ahead and publish that as well. So the boxes on the pre-sale, I think I'm going to run it about every two weeks for about 25 boxes. Then I'll keep me busy, um, but it won't overwhelm me, you know? And then the boxes that I already have for sale, hopefully those will go ahead and sell. I'm going to post something right now to Instagram and YouTube. So I'll post a short really quick. So I'm going to step away from you guys for a minute, post that short, and then I'll come back. And that way I can go ahead and let everybody know that the product is live. Do you remember my in my $2,000 savings error boxes where you save random numbers and once you have every envelope completed with the corresponding number, then you would have saved $2,000? Well, I decided to go ahead and make some and put them into my Etsy store. And these are some of the options that I have available right now for immediate shipment. But I am also taking orders as a pre-sale item. So if you head there and you don't see the box of your choice, go ahead and place an order for pre-sale. Okay, you guys, so out. I got the boxes all like set up. I did the little reel and the short on YouTube. And um, in a minute, I'm about to step downstairs and get me some lunch. It's already two o'clock. I, I didn't get up here until noon. And I really like to be done around five or six. Like once my son comes home from school, I kind of want to cut it out. So um, I'm gonna head downstairs, get me some lunch. And when I come back up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set up the templates and print for some A7 floral envelopes that I need to do. Now, I also have an order for some A7 character envelopes. I did take down the A7 characters and the A6 character envelopes because I'm having a printer issue. And let me show you what it looks like. So I don't know if you guys can see this and I'm gonna try to bring it really close so you can see. I'm sure you can see it now. But like, for instance, if there's one that says food and drinks, it spills over because the ink is so thick, it actually goes onto the roller of the printer and then reprints it here, which is messing up where I would cut, like I would cut right here, you know, and it's already messed up right there. So that's causing me to have to just trash it. I even only put two envelopes on a, on a piece of paper that I typically would put four, but I only put two because I was trying to avoid this from happening. And if it did happen, I wanted it to happen over here so I can cut that portion off, but of course it's right in there. So 
With that being said, I do have an order for Chanel. Thank you, Chanel, for your order. Um, and she ordered some A7 envelopes, and I think there's, yeah, 10 of them. So I'm really gonna have to do some finagling in order to get that, that order done. But that is the last character envelope that I'm going to be doing. Um, when it was the more cursive font, it didn't have any problems, but with this thicker, darker font, it's just giving me so many problems with my printer. I'll also show you guys my printer. Um, a lot of people ask me like, what type of printer do I use? And I got mine on like, I don't know, Black Friday or Amazon Prime or I don't, I don't know, some, some day where it was on sale and it was only like, I think $120 and I had $100 worth of fetch coupons that I used. So I literally paid like less than $30 for the printer and it's been working wonderfully for me. It prints on vellum. Other than this roller issue, I've never had any issues with the printer um, and yeah, so I'll show you guys. It's a Canon. Yeah, it's a Canon printer um, and it's over there by the Cricut. So when we go to print, I'll show you guys that and you can see, like, I'll explain to you what type of printer it is and hopefully you can find one on sale too. <laughs> like, that's the best way to go. Um, I have really simple printing jobs and so for that reason, that printer works beautifully. All right, so I'm gonna go find me some lunch and when I come back, we're gonna print off some A7 vellum floral. Okay, you guys, I'm back from lunch. We are going to get started with um doing the a7 envelopes i started warming up the laminator but i had ordered a different laminator and you guys why did it just deliver at the door it's a big old box but it's not as big inside so hold on okay hold on. Eh. okay this is the new laminator now, I'm going to open it carefully because if it doesn't do what I need it to do, then I will be returning. Y'all know. Amazon, I will return some stuff in a minute. But this is the Cinchy Instant Warm-Up High Speed Laminator. No waiting between pouches. Wow. Hopefully, this thing worked better than what I have. And I'll try to explain to you why I needed it or why I think I need it. <laughs> Hold on, let me put this down here because if it don't work out, baby, it's going back. You're going back to the stove if you don't work out like I think. All right, hold on. Okay, so let's see. This is the Cinchi. I already told you the name of it. Hold on, I'm trying to do this kind of properly, but it's not allowing me to be proper. There we go. All right, I already have, um, I think, three of these Scotch laminators, which work wonderful, wonderfully. And I also have two other types of Scotch laminators that are total trash. Um, <laughs> the reason why I think I need a new laminator is because if you guys know when I'm making like even these or the A7 envelopes, either one, um, I first laminate the vellum with three mil laminate. Then I add another three mil backing piece and put all of that inside of a five mil pocket and run it through. So I felt like I needed some higher settings, like settings, this particular laminator, let me show you. Eh, it goes uh, three, five, seven, and 10. So I can heat it up so it can seal it without me having to double laminate because what I usually do is run it through once and then every single time I'm running every envelope through twice. So we about to put baby to the test. Right on time it came too. All right, so let me turn this one off, set up the other one, and then we will print the A7 florals that I need to do and get to testing out our newest addition to the family. Right now he's not all the way in the family, okay? But if he does well, he'll be staying. So um, let me just plug them in. Okay, the on off button is over here. So we're gonna turn them on. And I don't know how I get them to go to 10 mils. Oh, select. Oh, we are gonna try 10. <laughs> All right, while that warms up, let's go ahead and print the sheets. This is a printer that I have. Remember my stack more money challenge? What I got from, um, to mom's budget, I took it off and stuck it on the front of my printer so I can use the box to make a um, 
in my $2,000 savings error box. But anyway, it's just a Canon. This is the type color image, da, 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 da. And it works wonderfully. So it takes a little while for it to print. That's one of the Scotch laminators, the other kind that I have that are trash. Do not buy that. Um, and then this is the Cricut and all my Cricut supplies are housed inside this little frog that I got from Timu. So I keep everything inside of there. And so that is that. So we're waiting on the job to print. And once it does, then we're gonna take those papers and cut them down. I think the laminator is all heated up. It's very noisy. Well, now the printer's printing too. But anyway, it's very noisy, but um, hopefully it'll work. These are how the envelopes come out. So they're great. These are the A7s and I'm gonna cut all these down. Is this your order? Whoever this is, thank you. <laughs> all right, so I have all the papers and my noisy new laminator is in full effect. Oh, it's kind of warm, okay, okay. Well, let me cut these down first and then we'll laminate. So they look like this, this is several pages of them. There's four envelopes per page. So I'm gonna cut these down first. Well, now after cut them all down, I just put them inside a laminate. I turned it back down to three mil until I actually seal them for the last time. So that's when I'll be able to see if it's working the way that I want it to work. But for right now, for them to go through one time, it's literally just three mil. So that'll work. And it does heat up super fast. Oh, look how fast. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's sucking it in so fast. This is way faster than the other one. Okay, wait, I think I'm liking it already. She's getting happy. Might be cutting down my laminating time. Hold on, that thing came out super quick. Let's see what it looked like. Oh, it's looking good, but it's three mils. You know what I'm saying? Three mils, we don't know. So let me hurry up because this thing moving fast. I can't even get the next four in before the first page go out. So let me finish doing this and then I'll, we'll start putting them together and we're going to do a real test of this machine and see how it goes. Okay, I will totally take some noise if this thing could do what I think it's doing. It went so fast. I'm gonna put it up to 10 because in a minute, we're gonna put the backing pieces on and run it back through in five mil. And in the meantime, I'm gonna cut these down so I can get them ready to put the backing cards on them. Okay. All right, so now that we got them all cut down, let me get all this off the table, first of all. Down into the trash bin you go. Okay, so now we're gonna get some answers. Will this machine do what I want it to do? First, let me put it on to, let me put it on 10 mil. 
I did notice because I tried to run run through run a piece through on 10 mil while I was on warp speed and I was trying to see like what it was going to do and it actually sucks the paper in a lot slower so it's like it's cooking it for a longer period of time yeah usually I have to run it through two times in order for it to seal properly because it's so thick so this time I was like, let me try to put it on 10 mils. Plus there's something, another project that I need a thicker laminate for that I wanna do before the end of the year. So I thought, why not invest in it now? The, the laminator was like 120, maybe? 190, everything's 120 in my world, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it maybe was like 119 or something like that. I feel like that's about the number it was. Um, and I just bought it and I was like, let me, I think I had talked about it in my cash stuffing video. I was like, I want to buy something that's going to make my life easier. And I was talking about this laminator. So let's see. I thought it was going to be around 200, but only ended up being like 119. I think the one that I picked, I'll see if I can link it in my um, description down below. So if you're interested, you can get you one, but mainly I'm trying to see if it's going to seal these envelopes without me running it through two and three times. So this will be the test right here because we're about to have a test of the emergency broadcast system this is only a test ready it goes much slower that's for sure so it's like cooking it for a longer time which maybe is squeezing it and making it all stay together i don't know as long as it doesn't burn them i feel like it'll be fine so i'm gonna keep setting up and we'll look at it as soon as it comes out. Ooh, okay then. Somebody said use, while it's hot, use your finger or a pen and go around the edge, but I don't know if you guys can even see, but there's no air holes around the sides of these. She's getting happy. I don't think I'll have to send them back two, through two and three times, which is the most annoying part of making these envelopes. I think I might've solved my own problems. Okay, I'm gonna finish creating all these and then we'll reconvene. Okay, these buddies are sealed. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. I got one more going through. Then I'm gonna cut them all down and then we're gonna package some orders. Um, I still need to work on order with the character envelopes and hopefully I can get that to work. Oh, fingers crossed on that one. All right, let me cut these down. I am super excited about my new laminator. I was struggling. Let me scoot you guys back. I was struggling. Not anymore. I thought, I said to myself, if I can get these to be a little bit hotter, like if it could heat cook it a little bit hotter, it would work. And that's what got me going on the 10 mil. And then also I want to use it for something that I'm going to be creating. So yeah, between those two, Look at that. That boy is see. I know you guys can't see it. That boy is sealed. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right, so I'm gonna cut all these down and then we will reconvene to do some order packaging and I'm gonna just try to figure out those character envelopes as best I can.
Okay, we're all done with these, cutting them down at least. Um, all right, I did run them all back through. And the reason why I did that is because um, I felt like they were kind of like warped and I wanted them to be flat like this. It wasn't to seal the sides, which is, whoa, because typically I'm doing it to seal the sides. But anyway, now I'm gonna use my Kodomaro Pro. If you've been here before, you already know, I love this little joker. And I'm gonna round all the corners. Now the A6 florals, I'm not rounding the corners of the envelopes. And it's because this extra step right here can lead to early carpal tunnel development. <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing all this all day. So um, I'm doing it for the little A7s because they look so cute in the wallet, but in a binder, like it kind of don't really matter. All of mine aren't rounded in my binders and they still look great. So I'm moving on with rounding these corners, hole punching these, and then we'll be packaging up these. Next, I need to, oh, I don't even wanna think about what I gotta do next, which is work on those A6, I mean, A7 character envelopes and try to figure out how to get that thing to print without giving me a problem. So yeah, we'll be moving on to that next. Ironically though, I had so many of those orders last week and I was struggling all last week trying to get these done. The florals are no issues at all. I do like to check every envelope after I round the corners and hole punch to make sure that they're all completely open. Um, but yeah, the florals aren't giving me any problems. It's the, it's the character ones. I'm like, I can't, I can't offer those anymore. So anyway, let me go ahead and continue rounding and then I'll hole punch all these and we'll separate them into orders and then we'll reconvene. mistake I haven't made in forever which is I flipped the back and now this thing will not open so I gotta remake a whole nother envelope <sighs> all right well let's get to it I guess there's nothing to it but to do it before I do that though I'm about to hole punch all of these on the mini pocket setting and then I'm gonna work on making that one envelope that I'm gonna need for these orders. All right, so I need to make the one more date night envelope, which wouldn't open because I put the backing on wrong. But then also for these, like the girls, I don't like that it's not centered like this one. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's up at the top. So I'm gonna sell this one as a oops. And all of the gas ones are the same. It's this floral print, the way that I cut down the floral print, all of the gas. So there's three gas that I'll be selling as oops as well. I think I only needed two gas for, for the orders. So I'm gonna make two gas, a, the girls and a date night. So those will be the four that I'm gonna make right now in order to get the orders correct. And the date night one, I'm gonna put in the trash cause it's not even open. But all the rest of these will be sold as oops later on in the month. That's how the oops happen. Okay, so I figured out that the template itself didn't have the word centered. And that's why when I cut them down, they weren't centered. So these four I need to recreate as we already talked about. And then for the character ones, I decided to try to turn down the um, density of the font or what do you call it? Transparency. Transparency of the font to make it kind of like lighter, but it's coming out gray versus this one's black and it didn't even bleed. Like the printer's tripping. So this is exactly how I end up with the oops pile and I'm gonna cut these down and eventually make them into actual envelopes and sell these as oops. And I'm gonna try to reprint hers now with black and hopefully it'll come out correctly and I can go ahead and cut down her 10 envelopes and make hers as well. So yeah, we're just waiting for it to print and then I'm gonna get started. Okay, it's sometime later. I started stacking up orders. I got the character envelopes done. I'm so excited because I was like, 
I turned the transparency down slightly so they weren't jet, jet black and it didn't cause me any problems. Um, let's see, who is this? Lorraine, no, Lorraine. She also ordered a debt tracker with her envelope. So there's that. Um, I'm on Connie's order next. Gas, groceries, and savings. Thea, Jerrica, Housing, Care. Let me run that through here, straighten that one out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I think I have about 10 orders ready to go. After all of this today, it only equated to 10 orders. So let me go ahead. Oh no, and then I have a couple of other this or that challenges. So I'm gonna put you guys in warp speed, start packaging up these packages, and then um, we'll be back to close out the day because it's already 4.20. Oh my God, time goes so fast. Okay, so we're about done for today. Let me see. So what I like to do now is basically see if um, I have any orders that I can just send out right away. So like for instance, Debbie just ordered a pack of IOU. So I'm gonna go ahead and package that up. I'm also gonna pack up Joanna's this or that challenge. I had some single cards for this or that. Elizabeth also ordered a pack of IOUs. Beth, she only ordered a double-sided this or that card number one, which I already stickered for her. So I'm going to go ahead and package that up and do her order right now too. Like some of these orders aren't due until the 11th and today's the 4th, but I'm like, I might as well just get them out if I can just, you know, package them up real quick. So that's going to be a couple of those. I need a couple of packs of IOUs. I'll go grab them out of the drawer. So that's four more orders. Diana, she only ordered a number six, this or that card, which is the one dime at a time. One of my favorites, girl. So I'm gonna send that to her since that's all she has. Let me see what else. Okay, and I see three of the boxes have already sold. Thank you guys so much. Ro, thank you for using my share and save link as well. Um, yeah, a lot of people have used that share and save link. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I do see a debt tracker. I'm going to try to go ahead and get out as well. Cause that won't take long. And then I'll pick back up tomorrow and we'll make mainly a six. It looks like there are some a seven orders, but mainly a six floral envelopes and some scratch offs is what we'll be doing tomorrow. So let me just go ahead and get these last orders out. I'm down to 34 orders in the queue before I print these last few. I am so glad I got this new laminator though, you guys. This thing is making my life so much easier already. Yeah, it was one of the most um, affordable, higher end laminators, if that makes sense. Instead of me buying like two or three of the ones that I told you was blue and white and they barely work, instead of me buying two or three of those and they're not even working, it's better to buy one you know that is actually going to do the job so yeah all right so let me package up these last six So I think that's it for today. I'm debating if I'm going to pick back up tomorrow or not. I know I'll be working all day tomorrow up here, but um, I still have 28 orders in the queue, three of which are boxes and they're ready to ship. Um, so I could package those up tomorrow, but the other 25 orders are all envelope orders. So they all have some form of envelopes in them. And so I'll be making quite a bit of envelopes tomorrow. I think I'm going to get an earlier start, like maybe 8 a.m. And hopefully I can get done by the end of the day. Um, so I don't know. I'll see if I'll bring you guys along or not. 
Um, it depends on how much footage I have from today and how long this video is already, and then we'll decide if I'm gonna pick back up tomorrow. But if you don't see me tomorrow, then thank you so much for watching this video. And I appreciate you guys being here with me doing the whole Etsy shop vlog thing. And um, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave one single emoji right here, letting me know that you made it. And um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. Uh, and also share this video with someone else if they need inspiration just to get started on a small business and keep it going. All right, you guys, I think that's everything for today, unless I see you tomorrow. Take care.